Hey Falcons fans, things are very tense here. For the second consecutive day, there have been fights and even injuries that left everyone worried. I will give you all the details firsthand, but before we start, make sure to give a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the latest updates. We have a lot to cover today, so let's get straight to it. Today, we will analyze the intense second joint practice between the Atlanta Falcons and the Miami Dolphins at the Baptist Health Training Complex. It was a day filled with fights, injuries, and notable performances from our quarterbacks Kirk Cousins and Michael Penix Jr. Right from the start, the practice was heated. On the first play, Falcons cornerback A.J. Terrell set the tone by lowering his shoulder into Dolphins running back Raheem Mostert, causing a sound that echoed through the stands. This impact occurred after the first of many fights of the day. The initial skirmish happened during special teams when a Dolphins player collided with a Falcons returner, believed to be receiver Rondale Moore or cornerback Mike Hughes, during a non-contact part of the practice. About 20 players gathered, but the scuffle quickly ended, setting an aggressive practice tone. Terrell's hit led to a brief pushing match involving defensive tackle Grady Jarrett and safety Jesse Bates III, among others, after the Falcons stopped the Dolphins' rushing attempt. And that was just the beginning. On the far field, where the Falcons' offense and the Dolphins' defense were practicing, things escalated further. In just six minutes, there were two full fights and another small scuffle. The first big fight occurred after a physical run by Tyler Algeyer to the Dolphins' sideline, leading to the bench's clearing. A minor fight followed when Moore caught a pass on the Dolphins' sideline and was pushed hard out of bounds. Moore retaliated by throwing the ball at the defender and exchanging words. The biggest fight of the day happened when quarterback Cousins hit Ray Ray McLeod with a pass in the middle of the field. After being tackled, McLeod punched a Dolphins defender, causing a major brawl involving all units of both teams. After several minutes of calming down and reminders, there were no more fights for the rest of the practice. The intense nature of these joint practices has become a point of discussion, and it's likely both teams will face fines, similar to the Detroit Lions and New York Giants, who were recently fined for fights during their joint practice. And not to mention the injuries that occurred, which are always a concern during these high-intensity practices. Unfortunately, the Falcons were not spared. Backup center Ryan Newsel, a likely roster candidate, suffered a calf strain on Tuesday and was absent from Wednesday's practice. The most significant injury came at the end of the session. During a play involving the second unit offense, Rondell Moore suffered a non-contact injury to his lower right leg. He was carted off the field with an air splint on his knee, surrounded by a team prayer circle. The extent of the injury is still being evaluated. Moore had been making progress, even catching a pass from Cousins earlier in the session while working with the first unit. His injury is a setback for a player listed as the second choice on the initial depth chart. The practice began with red zone drills, where Cousins was precise, completing both passes. Notably, he connected with Drake London on a tight window pass, pushing Atlanta close to the goal line. Algeyer capitalized with several runs that would have been touchdowns during this period. In subsequent 11-on-11 11 11 periods, Cousins completed 12 of 15 passes. Although the first-team offense didn't find the end zone during these drills, they had two substantial drives. One ended after a bad snap, and the other fell short of the goal line after London was tackled near the end zone. London had a productive day with two receptions on three targets, showing strong hands and physical play. Cousins later praised him, joking that London's catch in the middle of the field would have solidified his position as the receiver with the strongest hands Cousins has ever played with. Tight end Kyle Pitts was also a key target, catching three passes, including two for significant gains. His ability to find spaces in the defense and make tough catches was on full display. Among other receivers, Darnell Mooney caught a pass and drew a pass interference on a deep shot. Running backs Algeyer and Bijan Robinson were involved in the passing game, with each securing a few receptions. Miami's pass rush pressure managed to sack Cousins once, but he quickly recovered, completing a first down pass to Moore on the right sideline. In the ground game, Robinson and Algeyer split the carries, with the latter having a slight edge, especially in red zone scenarios. Algeyer's physical running style was highlighted by a touchdown run against Dolphins cornerback Jalen Ramsey. The defense was a bright spot for the Falcons. 
they consistently pressured Dolphins quarterback Tua Tagovailoa. Linebacker Arnold Ebiketti had an impressive performance with three pressures early in the practice, including a joint effort with rookie Braulin Trice that forced an early whistle to mark the play as dead. Despite Miami nearly connecting on a long touchdown, the defense held firm. A notable missed pass from Tavo Vailoa to receiver River Crockraft, who had beaten Terrell, was a relief for the Falcons. The second unit defense, which sometimes included third unit players, allowed early scores but finished strong. Defensive backs Anthony Johnson and rookies Jaden Price and Trey Vavel made consecutive pass breakups, showing depth in the secondary. The Dolphins' offense was shorthanded, with receiver Jalen Waddell and tackle Taron Armstead out, and Tyreek Hill seeing limited action. Still, the Falcons' first-team defense capitalized and performed well throughout the session. First-round pick and Falcons' backup quarterback Michael Penix Jr. had a mixed day with the second-unit offense. After a slow start, Penix found his rhythm, completing 7 of 13 passes. His early struggles included a one-of-three performance in the red zone, but he bounced back with a series of completed passes, including a precise throw to rookie receiver Casey Washington. Penix's willingness to take risks and challenge tight windows was evident. He threw a beautiful deep ball that drew defensive interference, showcasing his deep-throwing ability. In the ground game, Jace McClellan took most of the work with five carries compared to three by Carlos Washington Jr. The second unit ground game struggled without Newsel, highlighting his importance to the unit. And we can't forget special teams. They had their moments, with Avery Williams, who led the NFL in punt return average in 2022, getting the first reps despite not being listed on the depth chart. Third-year outside linebacker D'Angelo Malone worked on the front line with the first unit on special teams, trying to secure a roster spot. The offense continued to show its heavy-motion approach, with Josh Ali receiving a reverse handoff. Falcons offensive coordinator Zach Robinson's creativity in involving his players has been a camp highlight. But what comes next? The Falcons and Dolphins will take a break on Thursday before their preseason debut at 7 p.m. on Friday at Hard Rock Stadium. It's the first real test of the season and an exciting opportunity to see how these joint practices translate to game situations. So, Falcons fans, what do you think of these joint practices? Are you worried about the injuries? Excited about the performances of Cousins and Penix? Leave your comments below. Let's keep our expectations high and hope these injuries don't affect us. Very soon, we'll see our team on the field in a real matchup. If you enjoyed this update, don't forget to give a like and subscribe to the channel for more Falcons news. I'll keep you always well informed. Thanks for watching, and see you next time. Go Falcons!